Which brings me to Jada. There is the man. He is here now. Yeah, he's all here now. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, now Jada's question, I'll just find it. Analyzing my actions is showing me how much I am sinning towards women. Jada, can you be a bit more specific? Um, yeah, like sexual actions. Yeah. Um, so you go from one woman to another woman and so forth? Yeah. Yeah, if you just hold the mic up a yeah. bit closer. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And, um, and do you often have two on the toe at the same time? Or is this just one, like serial monogamy, or is it? Or It's more like... Even worse, like not even relationships, more like um, brief encounters, getting like a massage um, of, of sexual nature. Yeah. So it's like briefing, it's brief like encounters. A, yeah. 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 I get you. Okay. You, I, I'm sorry. I just needed to yeah, yeah. ask. I, I felt there's a bit more you could tell, but but I'll leave it there. Okay. Um, you say yet I am still finding it very difficult to feel any wrongdoing from my from my mum towards me how do you find that how do you find a problem when you feel there isn't any right so it's a very good question well fir firstly we need to see here that actually your definition you're like you're being driven by the pain and pleasure question yeah does that make sense yep. so you're not being driven by a desire for truth or a desire or, or a desire for love but rather you're just driven by what's going to give me pain what's going to give me pleasure i'm going to go for the pleasure so so whatever it takes even if i sin from god's perspective that's what i'm going to do mm -hmm. so the first problem is the lack of developed will to love does that make sense so here's your soul you're making a choice between pain and pleasure and you're deciding that the pleasure is the thing to go for. It doesn't matter what it costs. It doesn't matter what it costs the other person. It doesn't matter what it costs you. And your reasoning is along the lines of, well, if the other person knows the cost they're engaging, then what's going wrong? There's nothing yep. wrong. That's, That's what I've been feeling recently. Yeah, yep. but you're not realising that there's another half to your soul. Yeah. And every time, so here's the two halves... Every time your half, so this is you, engages with another woman sexually, you're really damaging this relationship, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing. So you're actually damaging yourself <laughs> in the process. So that you, there's a lot of truth that you need to, come to become aware of in this process. Mm -hmm. So there's an avoidance of truth, number one. You don't want to accept God's truth about the issue. You also don't want to face the moral issues involved with it. Does that make sense for the people who you're engaging sexually? So if a person, if you engage another woman sexually, mm -hmm. she also has a soulmate. You're not seeing how you're sinning against that relationship. Do you see what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. So, so there's a whole heap of truth that needs to be looked at there. From I feel like in my head, I, like I've known that and I know that. Yeah, but you don't feel it. No. And it's only how you feel that drives your actions. Yeah. What, what you know makes no difference, right? Yeah. So, so we, we, I'm talking here always from the soul-based soul perspective, so from the feeling-based perspective here. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really matter what you know here. What matters is how you feel here. And how you basically feel is that your actions are justified. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now let's trace this back, this this particular process back in terms of belief what is your relationship with your mother um <laughs> probably a lot closer than it should be and <laughs> when you say a lot closer than can you <laughs> like i've i've um like i was living at home until to like, what age probably i can't remember exactly probably 21 22 or something yep and it's still quite like i still um <laughs> go to my parents place weekly Really, for like one or two days. Yep, and what's your relationship with your mother in comparison to your relationship with your father? Uh, my father left when I was five. Yep. So So you were in a single parent household for a lot of... Yep, I've had a few stepdads during few that step time. A few stepdads in my time, but... Yep. So, so can you see that your mother sees you as her surrogate husband? Yep. Can you see that? Yep. Yep, which she does do, doesn't she? Really? Yes. She, yep. you're, you're the person that she sees as her... Her main man. Yeah. Yep. 
Now what it's done, so here's you, and, and Dad's sort of, sort of like now out of the picture. Mum's now got this relationship with you where everything that's now missing in her relationships with men, she now projects onto you. And you're her main man. In that process, she has actually taught you to abuse women. Isn't that interesting? She's basically telling you in this process that you are the ideal man. And she pretty much thinks that, doesn't she? I have, yeah, I have that feeling, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah she pretty much thinks that, that you are the ideal man. Mm -hmm. Now, now, Jada grows up to be an adult. He now believes he's the ideal man. Right? You're pretty confident with yourself with women, aren't you? That I wouldn't... That... I have trouble with that. Yeah. I feel like I've had um, a lot of insecurities and... Yeah, but in the end, you do believe yeah. that, that women are there for your sexual pleasure, do you not? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So this is sort of an extension of the issue that I raised with David in, a, in some ways. Yeah, I was feeling a lot. Yeah, your mum's, your mum's got this quite emotionally incestuous relationship with you mm -hmm. and instead of you rebelling against that like David has and then, you know, he felt quite sad about it, the oppression and, the, and he's, he's turned to drugs in the past in order to suppress the, the sadness and so forth. Instead of doing all that, you enjoy how your mum sees you. Mm-hmm. You saw it, follow? Yeah. Yep. And you're very reticent to give up this relationship with your mum. Yeah. What do you get out of it? You tell me. You get a fair bit. Yeah. Both emotionally and physically. Yeah, looked after and So what do you get physically? Um yeah. like how many how many meals do you have to pre prepare when you go around the mum? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever prepared a meal where out of mum's? Oh, I do, yeah. For her? Own. For her? No. No. Never. Okay. So so you get all your meals on tap. Yeah. All right, so you get your meals. Yeah. What else? Do, do you, have you ever had to wash your mum's clothes? No. Never. No. Yeah, interesting. I was washing my mum's clothes when I was five. Yeah. Okay. So you never had to do that, so you get a laundry person. Mm -hmm. As well, yep. How do you spell laundry? R Y or A R Y? R Y, okay. Laundry person, okay. What else do you get? Um, what feelings do you get from her? Yeah, like you're saying, like I'm a good, a good guy. You're a good guy. Yep. Yeah, you're, you're the ideal guy. So I yep. get that feeling from her. Even if no other woman thinks that, she does, right? Yeah. So, so now there's this codependency that's built up between yourself and your mother, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're dip you like a lot of the things she gives you, she likes a lot of the things you give her. In fact, she educated you through your life to give her those things, right? And both of you like the relationship because you get what you want out of it and she gets what she wants out of it. So the, the big problem is that, uh, what else do you get emotionally? Let's talk about emotionally. If, if you've got a problem, who do you take it to? Yeah, I'll take it to her. Take it to mum, yeah. yeah. So, so there's an emotional mm -hmm. bond mm -hmm. which allows you to have a degree of emotional intimacy. So you have some emotional intimacy with mum, yes? Yeah, it also feels cold as well. Well, of course, we'll explain yeah. why in a minute, but, but you do do this, yep. you, you, this is who you share with. Yep. Now can you see that a lot of your definitions of what a woman should do are tied up in this? Mm -hmm. and, and really if you're getting all of these things from, in, in, and particularly some emotional intimacy and so forth from your mum, what's the point of having emotional intimacy with any other woman? There's not much point, is there? Mm. So what's the only thing missing in your relationship with mum? Sexual. Sex. Mm. That's the only thing missing. Yeah. 
-hmm. So what do you choose to do with that? You find, find another woman yeah. to supply the thing that's missing in your relationship with your mother. Do you follow? Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing. And this is why you don't see that there's anything wrong with the whole process. Because you're getting a whole heap of things that you want. She's getting a whole heap of things she wants. Mm -hmm. And the bit that's not there, the bit that's missing, you go and use another woman for. Whether that be a one night stand or a massage or whatever. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. hmm. That's the answer to your question. That's what's really going on. Now, even in this discussion, you're very resistive to it. Very resistive. <laughs> yeah. Can you feel it? Can you feel... Because what I'm basically suggesting mm. to you mm -hmm. is that if you are ever going to progress towards God and if you're ever going to progress towards love and truth, you're going to have to give up this very incestuous relationship with your mother, which means giving up a whole heap of things that you find quite nice mm -hmm. and quite good. And, and your mum will be confused as well in the process because she thinks she, like, both of you are happy. Why are you doing this for? So she's going to be ultra confused about you doing it as well. Do you understand? Yeah. Now, this is a problem with emotionally incestuous relationships with children. What's happening, what happens is we frequently, when this relationship between our partner and ourselves does not work and we have children, we then put the burden of supplying whatever our partner did not supply onto our children. So in your case, the partner's not supplying some emotional intimacy, so I get it from Jada. So mum gets it from Jada. Partner's not supplying some, you know, male, masculine sort of emotion and feeling. Get that from Jada. And, and after a while, the parent sets up this relationship where the child now thinks that that's the ideal parent-child relationship. The problem is, is that it damages our concept of the opposite gender quite severely to the point where we believe that this is actually, this codependent addiction with our mothers is, is actually a good thing. Or, by the way, this happens with girls with their fathers, right? Same, same issue. You see a lot of fathers can't confide with their wives. So what do they do when they have a ch girl child? They confide in the child, the girl. She learns that she's really the surrogate emotional support for father. And the same kind of thing gets established. And so what does the girl need then? The only thing, if she wants sex, the only thing is she can't have sex with dad. So find another man to have sex with and dad doesn't really care who she has sex with as long as dad's the primary focus emotionally of her life as soon as dad stops being the primary focus emotionally of her life dad goes into a major meltdown because he wants to be the primary focus that's what he created he wants her to remain the same your mum's going to go into a big meltdown once you confront this once you confront this because mm -hmm. she's not going to confront it first by the way okay. she won't and you at this stage have no desire to confront it, right? which is the reason why you engage in sexual activity with women without seeing the problem with it. Mm -hmm. You follow? Yep. Mm. And it's, um, Ask away. Yeah, just with... I've just noticed as well that I've, I'm viewing God and when I'm trying to... I feel praying, but I'm, it's obviously all in my head and stuff. This is what I've come to work out. Mm -hmm. um, but even that, God seems like a, like a man, like very male to me. Mm -hmm. and is it, like, Which I is the reason why you struggle with your relationship, right? With God. Yeah. Is that, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the belief is that God's a male, but, but you know, you've had no emotional, much emotional energy from a man in authority, a man that's, you know, in a, older than you or anything like that because of the breakdown of relationship with dad. And as a result, you can't even really emotionally connect to the concept no. at this stage. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Definitely affecting your relationship with God. And then, of course, uh, the addiction with the women and the actual treatment of women means that you can't have a relationship with the feminine side of God either. So, so both parts of the relationship are interfered with here. Does that make sense? So part of it's going to be able to feel the pain associated with the lack of relationship with your father. And the other part is to break down this codependent addiction with your mother. 
um, but, but you are going to struggle with the desire to do so. I'm finding it hard with, um, like I feel like with my dad, like to me that was obvious that there was love withdrawn. Mm. Mm-hmm. With mum, I feel like yeah, she's looked after me at least. Yeah, you feel she loves you. Yeah. Your definition of love is this is what a mother does. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's not true. God is also a mother and God doesn't do this. In fact, what God does is God wants you to stand on your own two feet. Does that make sense? So, so the reality is this kind of relationship with a parent is actually out of harmony with God's love, um, but many people engage it because it's codependently satisfying. Yeah. yeah. So, so as a truth, that's pretty hard to accept, right? Yeah. And what I'm basically saying is that is that. The, Jada does not have a desire to address the problems that have associated with it. But once you start to accept the truth from God's perspective, what will happen, Jada, is you'll start seeing, wow, this is probably one of the worst things that could happen to me, actually, to have this kind of relationship. Because it actually severely damages a relationship with the other half of yourself, your, your soulmate. Not only that, it has severely affected how you see yourself. You are very dependent. Your worth is very tied up with your mother's opinion of you. And if, you'll find that if you, if you do try to change this relationship with mum, your mum is going to go into a meltdown. And you know that, like she is going to go into a meltdown. And in the process of going into a meltdown, she might say and do things to you, to you that really make you feel like, wow, my mum doesn't care about me at all, right? And that's going to really challenge your own concept of self. So your issue of worth is tied up into this relationship as well. And that's why it's going to be a very difficult thing to break for you. Does that make yeah. sense? Mm-hmm. Yep. But essential if you ever want to be, if you ever want to have even a decent marriage or a decent partnership with a woman at any time, unless you address this problem, you will not have one. You, you will live the rest of your life without one, probably. Unless that woman tolerates this very emotionally incestuous relationship, you, you won't have a relationship. Does that make sense? Yeah. And this is one reason why you don't attract. Uh, you know, you're attractive enough man and you've, you've got things going for you, but you don't actually attract women in long-term relationships. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So it's actually affecting a lot of your life. Far more than... So, so at some point you're going to have to weigh the cost-benefit, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. The pain-pleasure. At this stage you feel, no, the pleasure is more doing this is more than any pain you're getting from it but at some point once you start receiving god's truth about the issue you'll realize actually the pain of what you're doing is far worse not only now but long term than the pleasure you're actually getting from the relationship at this stage Mm -hmm. yeah and also it's it's also not good for your mother yep not good at all Because it prevents her from having her soulmate relationship as well. I can even see that she's uh, having a strong relationship with her dad, her, my grandfather. Yeah, it's multi-generational, all these problems. Yeah. yeah. So normally what happens when the parents do this is the opposite gender parent is the parent that the previous generation has a relationship with. So with your mother, she has it with her daddy, right, and so forth, and it goes each switches gender each subsequent generation because of the addiction. And usually the partners can't handle this relationship, you see. So most men get very jealous in this sort of situation where this woman is mostly concerned about what daddy thinks or feels rather than what he thinks or feels. So eventually this guy leaves which then means that she's looking for a substitute. Eventually he's going to die, so where does the substitute come from? If she's got a male child, that's going to be the substitute. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Very damaging multi-generational error. Yeah. And just with... Because I have a little brother as well, Mm -hmm. half-brother. And if if I can see that... And I know that that's what's going on, because it's happening to me and it's happening with him. Yeah. 
Where um, <clears throat> do I have responsibility in that situation to for my little brother? To well, how can you change something for him when you haven't yet changed it for you? That's a bit. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't be able to do that. Sure. But you could you could actually begin to change it and model some behaviour to him as to what's going on. Okay. You know, it's rare that um, that all the male boys in a in a with a with a mother like your mother would all respond in the same way. So usually, some of the boys he, rebe he, he goes into rebellion. And, yeah, and that's yeah, it's been eye opening for me to see. Um, so he's doing what David did with his mother. Yeah, yeah. To see her, because I, I didn't feel like I got the anger from her, because I was already probably doing what she wanted growing exactly, up. Exactly, you were groomed to do so, yeah. and usually it's the oldest boy or the yeah. oldest girl that's groomed into this process. Yeah. So I've seen seen him copping the the anger. Yeah, yeah. And her anger with men. Yeah. Yeah, and demands on men. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty bad, and and. Unfortunately, a lot of older brothers blame their younger brothers for the anger. You know, they say, you just need to do more of what mum wants, just like I do type of thing, which is not the case. What's actually happening is mum's getting triggered. So that's probably what I've been doing already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so he has the additional burden of feeling like older brother disagrees with his course of action. Yeah. Tricky, hey? Yeah. So, yeah, very, uh, these kind of problems are multi generational or emotional incestuous relationships have a huge, there are, like, it's very rare to not see one on the planet, to be frank. Um, but some are more intense than others, and particularly the relationships where one of the parents has left home. You particularly see it under those circumstances. Where, where there's a breakdown in this relationship, then this relationship gets established quite intensely. And in fact, many couples wouldn't even stay together unless that happened. Many couples, many of these couples wouldn't even stay together because, because this woman would be so dissatisfied with this relationship that eventually she would leave if she didn't have this relationship. Do you see? So, so what I see is some, some couples have been married 60 years and mum's got an incestuous relationship with old, oldest or youngest brother. It's usually one of them. And she's developed this incestuous relationship over the years and that's what keeps her in her current relationship as well. She, she doesn't feel any dissatisfaction with the current relationship. The current relationship provides the sexual connection and the relationship here provides all the emotional connection. So she feels satisfied. Does that make sense? Not considering her, the long-term detrimental effects on herself, her partner or her children, unfortunately. Yeah, so I see a lot of marriages actually stay together only because they've actually had children. Right? That's why there's this belief still on the planet that if you have a child with somebody, you'll stay together longer. <laughs> Because there's actually addictions involved with <laughs> what, what it gives the person, you see. That's why they stay together longer, because they're meeting more of their addictions. Sad, really, huh? Yeah, quite severe issues. Now, how does that relate to the use of our will? Well, when we are, when we are engaged, as you are, Jada, in meeting a lot of your current addictions with another person in a codependent manner, then you won't have a highly developed will to change that unless you really love love and truth. Unless you really love, you know, the right thing, you won't have a high desire to change it. So, so part of this educational process for yourself is learning about what's the right thing, learning about the damage. See the damage to your other, you know, your sibling, to, to your brother. See, see what's really going on and, and see the damage that's being caused, that's a part of the educational process in terms of getting to the point where you now feel motivated to do something about this rather than just live in it, you know? Yep. Now, I raised all of that. Your original question was about the sexual uh, feelings you have towards just women other than your mother. <laughs> and you can see the relationship, can you, between that, that, that you need those women because, because you have sexual desires that can't be fulfilled in this relationship. 
So you need the other women. And, and your mum needs the occasional stepfather, you know, occasional guy, to satisfy her same desires because she can't get those met through you. And that's why you have transient relationships with others and she also does. Does that make sense? No one permanent. Or well, semi-permanent generally. You know, stay for a few years. Off they go and so forth. Yep. So you're right with that? You got any more questions? That's all right. No. That's fine. Yep. If we go across to Felix. 